This is the OI, a Japanese super tank that could have been the monster of World War II. Over 115 tons of steel, giant guns and armor that could withstand everything, except common sense. But here is the problem. In the real world, this tank was never built. And today we will give it a chance to see the light of day. Albeit on a 172nd scale, I gathered everything, blueprints, in-game reference and pile of photos. Now I have the foundation for the work. I decided to create my own kit and I started creating a 3D model in Blender. Because I already had some experience with the software and was familiar with its basic tool. Interestingly, my initial plan was much simpler. I just wanted to model a tank turret and create fortifications similar to those used by Germans with their Panther during World War II. It could have been a diorama featuring marines storming the fortified structure. But soon I realized that a single tank turret wouldn't be enough. It's time to understand, if you are going to do something, you might as well to do it right. Process of modeling took me two whole weeks, during which I was fully immersed in the process. Afterward, it was time to think about which 3D printer to use to bring my model to life. Here I faced a tough decision. Should I go with an FDM printer or a resin one? And since I live in an apartment without a garage or a well-ventilated workspace, I ruled out a resin printer right away. I don't want to live on a chemical factory and resin 3D printer, it was too risky. So I chose FDM 3D printer and set it up on my balcony. After spending a few days tinkering with setting, I figured out to handle the parts, adjust the dimension and started printing the calibrated model. Now all parts are well printed. Of course, you can see some issue, but it is prototype and I just want to know can FDM printer make model kit or not. And of course, I want to have a light tank on my display case. Sure, the result isn't flawless. The model has a few minor imperfections, but the details turned out crisp and clear. You can easily see the pins, balls and rivets. Right away, I realized that this model is a fantastic canvas for further work. Some highlights here, a watch there, and it'll look amazing. One of the standout features of my 3D printer is the ironing function, which works incredibly well. Thanks to this, the part came out smooth and shiny. Crucial, since FDM printers typically have visible layer lines. That's the main drawback of FDM technology, but it's manageable. Now I began post-processing. Some parts, like the tank's body, had excess material and errors caused by 3D printing. Armed with the sandpaper, I smoothed all the surfaces. I didn't aim for perfection, because this is just a prototype. If it proves successful, I will refine the design and the printing process in future. Assembly I started with the chassis, since the upper body would eventually conceal it making later adjustment more difficult. The tank tracks, it is a different story. I designed them myself. I chose the Japan 100 tone tracks and a little bit changed it. In my opinion, this makes them perfect. However, assembling them wasn't straightforward. Tracks I printed separately to preserve their detail. Printing them as a single piece would have led to fused parts and reduced quality. Overall, assembling these tracks took several evenings, as I had to glue each link by hand. To support the turrets, I repurposed part of an old can model, cutting it into pieces. Since these elements will be hidden beneath the body, their appearance wasn't a priority. Next, I tackled the turret. I printed several versions, monolithic turret and ones made up of multiple small parts. I ended up choosing the multi-part design since the detail quality was exceptional, especially for an FDM printer. Some components, including the Canon, need extra post-processing. FDM printers often struggle with round shapes, 
but after some sanding, the result were satisfying. With all the parts assembling, the model is now ready for the next stage. The next step was to improve the main turret of the tank. Using copper wire, I crafted a ladder and handles for the hatch. These small details, oddly enough, always add depth to the model. I decided not to make any further modification to the other parts of the turret. Instead, I moved on to the hull. My first task was to use a mesh printed on 3D printer as a protective cover for the ventilation holes. It was a small but essential addition that gave the model extra realism. Such elements immediately stand out, especially with proper painting. After that, I glued the upper armor piece and installed a hatch at the rear part of the hull. The parts were easy to assemble which noticeably speed up the process. The parts were easy to assemble, which noticeably sped up the work. The same applies to the front of the model, for which I prepared elements with similar parameters. As you can see, everything fits perfectly, and the model has many interesting angles and curves. The front turrets were assembled of camera but their construction is almost identical to the main tank turret, except for minor differences. For instance, the addition of U parts on the top. It seems to me that these turrets definitely need such features. The next stage was to work on the side protective panels. I needed to add ladders to them, but I decided not to bore you with the lengthy process of installation. What matters is that I achieved the result I wanted. But on the one side I added clamps, leaving the other side empty to maintain variability. Now I can adjust the model's position on the shelf to display the size that the best fits to my mood. Once the primary details were ready, I moved on to the final assembly stage. Gluing the two whole parts together is always a bit nerve-wracking, since the accuracy determines the final structure. But once everything was in place, I felt immense satisfaction, and the model already looked cohesive and I could proceed to the creative part – priming and painting. Priming is always a defined moment. When the model is covered with a single coat, the details take on a new dimension. The primer highlighted the volumes and small elements, giving the model a good look. Now it was time to begin painting the model. And of course, the first layer had to be tank base color. To achieve this base color, I mixed olive and rich green to create the perfect foundation for Japanese military equipment. The color turned out exactly as I envisioned and was easily applied to the entire model. The next stage of the working involved washing. My first attempt didn't go well. The black paint, which I used on previous model, Unfortunately was, unfortunately was expired, and I had to put in some effort to fix the situation. But then I used my favorite Van Dyke brown paint. It dissolved wonderfully in a thinner, even after drying, and was perfect for highlighting small details, blending beautifully with the tongue's green color. Each rivet and corner gained subtle shadowing, adding depth and dimension to the model. I carefully added scuffs to show that this tank wasn't fresh of the assembly line, but had spent some time traversing rough terrain. Sponge meters were great with this model, and I can confidently say that it's much better when used acrylic paint retarder. This prevents you from constantly having to revet the sponge on the palette. Next, I finally tackled the details that had been on my mind since the modeling stage. I highlighted all the rivets with a light shade to make them visually pop and give the necessary volume. Next, I decided to add rust, but I didn't want to have a big rusty chunker, so I just added a little bit rust. As for the tracks, I painted them black with silver accents on the areas that frequently contact the ground. At this stage, the model already looked impressive. But I wanted to go further and work on dust and dirt effect. I used only a few colors – blue, white, brown, yellow and green 
Using a brush, I randomly apply dots of different colors across the armor. Then, with a white brush dip it in thinner, I removed the excess oil paint, creating various streaks, dust marks and rain effects. Once dry, this part of the model looked like this. The same technique was applied to the left side of the model and of course the turret. All vertical parts of the model received the same effect. Yes, I needed to improve my work with this technique, but honestly, there are my first attempt, so don't judge too harshly. Now let's switch to the horizontal surfaces, for which I mixed yellow and brown paint. Aiming for a dusty effect, I applied the resulting color to the horizontal section and blending it with a thinner. This created a light dust effect that perfectly complemented the model's base color and indicated that the tank had traveled through a very dusty area. Overall, I felt that this was enough. However, as an additional effect, I added few streaks near the fuel tank's cap, marking the complexion of the work on this model. And here it is, fully finished. Honestly, I didn't expect my 3D printer to handle such a complex task. But with attention to detail and the right approach, I managed to create something I'm genuinely proud of. As Jeremy Clarkson would say in such a situation, I made something. <laughs> but what do you guys think about this model? Share your thoughts in comments and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumb up and check out my other pages, for instance Patreon where you'll find additional material like free STL model, behind-the-scenes content and photos of figurines and dioramas that won't make it to this channel due to the significant difference in content type. Also, don't forget about my Calls 3D page, where you'll find plenty of models to enhance your vehicle and dioramas. As I mentioned in previous video, I planned to create a very big set of models. Thank you for watching, this has been Vlad from the No Quality Dioramas channel, goodbye and see you soon.